Uh, this morning, I'll show you the Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio. And if you're not familiar, uh, the Teams Toolkit is our tools for helping you develop and build and publish and uh, all sorts of things that you'll probably get into as you make Teams apps. Uh, if you're a .NET developer inside of VS. We also have these tools in VS Code, which I've also um, jumped on here and shared before, uh, but we're gonna look at VS today and see what we're doing for .NET developers. Uh, so let me uh, get started. I'll share my screen and show you some areas where you can get started. So I have a couple things up. Um, first thing I wanted to show you is how do you even get the tools? Um, so the way you install the Teams Toolkit is inside the VS installer. Um, in the ASP.NET web development workload thing, if you have that installed, there's an option over here uh, called Microsoft Teams Development Tools. So if you check that box, um, you'll get a couple megabyte download, and that installs our extension. So once you have that, then you can jump back into VS and you'll get this project template. So this is the Teams app project template. And you can create a new project and you'll get a couple options. So these are the templates that we have to get you started uh, with a Teams app. If you're not familiar with a Teams app, um, you don't really need any of these things because a Teams app is really just a JSON file. It just kind of defines some metadata about how you want to extend the Teams client. So those are things like if you want to embed a website inside of Teams, or if you want to create a conversational experience using a bot, or you want to um, ex extend the chat compose area with some kind of special uh, search functionality or some kind of action to do something, um, you can do that as well. And all that's expressed inside of a JSON file and you point to the URLs and things of, of these hosted experiences that run those. And then there's other some dependencies that you need, like if you're gonna do a conversational thing, you might need a bot. And then so you need to go down the rabbit hole of bot framework and figure all that out. Um, so the Teams Toolkit tries to help reduce some of the tediousness of the configuration for those things so you can just jump right into your code and focus more on your app. So we have these templates to jumpstart you and those experiences. Um, and so we've kind of opinionated um, where how you can get started, but it's all pretty flexible if you want to change it later. Uh, so for example, so these templates are based on scenarios that we've seen um, folks start with. So there's the concept of what we call a notification bot. And that's basically um, if you have some data and you want to send it into Teams inside of a chat or a channel and, and show an adaptive card. So you wanna show some type of uh, little UI inside of Teams with um, maybe links or text or clickable things, um, whatever you whatever you wanna do, um, then you can use a notification bot template to get started with that. Or if you wanna kind of do it the reverse way and type something in the chat and then execute something in a remote, you know, uh, internal process somewhere, you can do a command bot. So this helps you set up with a Teams chat command, and then you can um, run it, you know, run this web app where, however you want and, and do whatever you want. And then um, similar thing with a workflow bot. This is a conversational kind of back and forth. Um, if you want to do something like a Q&A or um, like a ticketing system or something like that, you want to show an adaptive card with some kind of action that someone can do or, or people in a chat can do. And then a tab is an embedded website. And then a message extension is a way to expo uh, extend the chat compose area uh, with it. I think this example does um, both. It does both a search based message extension so you can do a custom search. I think the example shows how to query NPM um, and, and show like a list of the packages inside of Teams and then it pastes an adaptive card with you know whatever you want to customize that. Uh, so. I already, to save some time, I already created some of these. So we don't have to wait for VS to scaffold this stuff. Um, so I'll just open, uh, this is a, I think a workflow bot template. So all of the templates start out kind of the same. Let me know if you, uh, if anyone needs me to zoom in or anything like that, I can bump up some fonts, but I've tried to scale things pretty large. Okay. By default, go ahead. No, oh, all good, all good. So. Okay, great. Thanks, Vesa. What you get by default is um, you get a uh, .NET project. I think this is a web API project. And we have uh, some setup in here for the Teams related stuff. Um, so there's some configuration for it. Since this uses a bot, there's some configuration using the bot framework SDK. So all of that's in here. Uh, there's also uh, for .NET developers, we have an SDK called the Teams FX SDK. And this is some higher level abstractions built on top of the bot SDK uh, to make some of these scenarios a little easier. 
um, like commands and responding with adaptive cards. Uh, there's a lot of boilerplate needed to do those things. So we have some abstractions in our SDK that you can optionally use uh, to make these scenarios a little easier. So I'll give you an example of that. Um, for example, we have this interface for implementing uh, handling commands. So you can just define uh, whatever the trigger is for that. In this case, it's do stuff. And this one is used as a response to an adaptive card to create kind of a sequence of um, actions. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. And then you can define how you want to respond with that adaptive card. In this case, it's going to replace the card instead of posting a new one. And then it's going to send the actual card, which is handled here. And then it uses the adaptive card SDK. So there's a .NET SDK for that as well. So you can uh, define your adaptive card with JSON, and then it has a bunch of uh, .NET classes to uh, wrap all that. So let me show you what that looks like. To do this, uh, to debug this right from VS, you do have to run some type of tunnel because this is um, Azure Bot Framework needs a way to communicate between Teams and itself and then your local machine. So new in um, the team toolkit for 17.7 in VS is we have support for dev tunnels. So you can, if you haven't seen this yet, you can create tunnels directly inside VS uh, for not just for Teams toolkit for anything. Um, so I've created one. I've just named it Teams Dev here, and I've already selected it. So when I have this selected, our extension will have this menu here, Teams toolkit. When you right click on the project or you go to the project menu, you'll get a Teams toolkit menu, and you have some options here of how to interact with your. Uh, project uh, with Teams. So the main thing with our toolkit is you need some way to um, create these resources. Right now, I've, I've scaffolded the project, and it's just a .NET project, but Teams doesn't know that this is an app yet. So I have a manifest here. Um, there's a manifest already here, and there's all this information and all this metadata about how I've wanted to uh, extend the platform. Um, and you don't have to get into all this, but eventually you probably will learn it and you can go in and customize it as you need to. But Teams needs to know about this. So the way you do that with uh, with VS is use this menu command for now. So you just prepare the app dependencies and you sign in with an account. So this would be your M365 account. This is the tenant where you want to run this. And I'm using a dev program account. So if you can't uh, run custom apps inside of your tenant, then we recommend you use a dev program account. So it's a free account to get your own subscription, your own developer identity, and kind of a sandboxed environment to run these apps. And when you click this, um, the toolkit is going to run through a bunch of tasks to set up um, all the dependencies needed for the platform. So this is registering a new app ID uh, for Teams. And uh, in this case, it's also creating an Azure AD application for the bot, which is required for bot framework to work, and, and a bunch of other steps. And all of those steps are expressed in this YAML file. So if I open this, I can go through and the toolkit, uh, the output menu here jumped up and showed. So you can see this actually shows all the things it did. So it goes through all these steps, um, and all these steps are expressed inside of this YAML file. So Something new that we did um, in the past year is all of the toolkit actions, so everything that um, your project needs to run and do whenever you're either running locally inside of VS or if you want to use this as a provision and deployment solution, um, you can also express uh, those in this other file. So there's two YAML files, one for your local kind of setup and one for your remote. And all the actions are expressed here. So the, it kind of goes through these different life cycles. So we've opinionated some things that you'll go through, um, provisioning and deploying resources and then publishing your app. So I've gone through and defined, um, there's a provision step here. And this, uh, you can think of this like a task runner, something, um, you know, I think I most think of it like Gulp or something like that um, and other projects. Um, could think of like MS Build, I guess. Um, but basically you have a bunch of these, uh, what we call actions, and it looks a lot like a GitHub Actions file or an Azure DevOps pipeline file. And we have all these predefined um, kind of actions uh, to do Teams related stuff. So we've tuned them all for all the things that you would need to do for Teams Dev. You can mix and match um, whatever you want these task runners to do. And so I'm going to create a Teams app and uh, save that in a, as an environment variable and just go through all the steps I need. So I need a Teams app. I need an, um, a bot and a, I need an AAD app for my bot. 
And then um, there's some other specific stuff in here about uh, just putting it into app development JSON file to make it a little easier to work with .NET projects. So we have an action to do that because we found developers often want to do that kind of stuff. And then uh, create a bot framework registration. So this is normally you'd have to jump through a bunch of portals to do this. You have to go to uh, the bot framework portal or um, or the Azure portal and also the team's developer portal and create all this stuff manually and then paste it into these files. But instead you can automate all this with just these uh, tasks. All that stuff, all the outputs of these get saved in environment files. So if I look in my local environment file, here's all the outputs. So when I ran that prepare command, I get my app ID, my tenant ID, um, all this stuff. Um, here's here's the tunnel URL I created. All that gets saved as an environment file. If I don't want to use Teams Toolkit to do a piece of this, I can uh, I can just delete some of this or comment it out. I could just delete these and say, hey, I don't want to create a Teams app. I already have an app ID. My my admin gave me one that's all configured and been blessed and everything. Um, I could just delete this or I can just go into the environment file and just um, paste it in here. And then uh, what this helps you do is it helps you have a single manifest file that you can keep, which is here, and then use these environment uh, variables to help with replacement. So the toolkit can help you manage, like if you want to create a local one, and then maybe you want to run this in a QA or staging or production and dev, all sorts of other remote environments, you can have one manifest file and just use replacement strings like this. And then it just reads through the environment files and you just name them however you want. And those are kind of like your environments. So the toolkit helps you manage that. Uh, okay, so now that that's running and I've, I already ran prepare. Um, so Teams knows about my app. I got my app IDs and everything. Um, we can just uh, hit the de start debugging and it will launch Teams in a browser uh, for the for the tenant for the account that I signed in with. And it'll go right to the install um, app uh, window. So we'll wait for that to run. And let me grab the browser and bring that over. I think it's going to pop up a new browser for me. There we go. So you can set breakpoints, um, step through this just like you would expect in any other .NET project. Um, it's just running as a web app right now. All right, so Teams, is it's already logged me in. Um, if you do this the first time, you, um, you'll probably get a, a login screen. I've already done this, so it's already remembered my identity uh, for Teams. So I'll go ahead and add my app. And then it will jump right over. And I've already ran this app a couple of times. So uh, this template just defines a single command. Um, so you just type in hello world. And let me make sure, I don't know if it matters, but go ahead and just do it the same. Type in hello world. And then this is a workflow. So you get the first response is a card and it will give you one button to do something. So we'll just wait for my response here. So there's my card. Uh, this is part of the template. I get an action to do something, so I'll go, and go ahead and click it. And then that handler I showed you, that the way it's set up is to replace that card. So there's no new card here, and it just updated it to a new card that, that just is an act. It says, hey, you click the button. Um, so you can imagine you could start chaining these things and create some type of workflow, um, whether it's an approval system or a ticketing system or something like that, and you can customize that all with the adaptive card SDK, um, however you want to display these things. So that's what the toolkit does for you. Um, places to get started, let me jump over here. Uh, in the docs, you can get started here. We have a, a section for VS Code, which is over here, but make sure you're in the VS section. And then you can go through, and this gives a good example of kind of what I, what I talked about. These are the kind of the opinions we express of, um, you create a project, you have some development, and then you can optionally choose to use the tools to provision and deploy. We didn't get into that here, um, but we do scaffold you a bunch of bicep files so you can host these in Azure very easily. And the toolkit has commands to help you with that. And we jump over here. Also, we have a lot of the project is open source on GitHub. So it's a good place to file issues. Um, you can start a discussion. Um, the VS extension is not open source, um, but the rest of the project is. So you can take a look at here, um, like the SDKs are open source, the samples are all available, the templates are in here uh, for .NET and for JavaScript and TypeScript. And uh, this is where all the this is where all the 
planning and communication and issues happen. So feel free to jump in there if you have any questions. And I think that's my time. So thanks for listening. Uh, hopefully you got some use out of that and looking forward to feedback from .NET developers. Uh, you know, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you.